let's jump into this idea of the bus ministry. Um, in the Schoology resource folder, we put it in this morning. A couple of you emailed and asked for the bus manual. So that is in the resource folder in Schoology. So you can just take that, download it, um, do whatever you want with that. But then we put two, two or three other resources in there if you want. Uh, Pastor Armacost uh, this summer developed something for our bus captains and I'm just making it available to you because if you're ever in charge of a promotion, it'll help you. He came up with what um, he calls the Fall Push Survival Guide, okay? And that was made for captains to help them organize things. It has organizing sheets and all that, so that's available there. He also, in the spring, came up with a, it's about a two-page write-up on how to have a great spring push. Okay, all of those are there in that uh, resource folder, and that is there to help you because you may think, oh, I'm never going to need that. I'm going to be a teacher. Okay, I can pretty much guarantee you this is what happens to staff members here. Normally, I tell a guy when I hire him the first couple of years, I don't know what you're going to end up doing. Some of that, it goes back to what we discussed yesterday in spiritual gifts. I don't know exactly everybody's spiritual gifts. We've got to work together and figure it out and also see if we're a fit. And so sometimes during a, you know, two to five years in working in a place, you're going to do a lot of different things and then kind of settle into uh, certain jobs um, that you can tell and your pastor can tell that uh, God has gifted you in. Okay, so... You may say you're never going to do it, but I'm just telling you, I never thought that I would coach. All right? And I coached for at least 10 years. Okay, um, uh, There's a lot of things. I didn't think that I'd be a business manager. Okay, There's a lot of things that you may not think you're going to do, and you're going to just have to flat out do it. Okay? Um, so let's get into the bus ministry. Uh, if you're following, if you're going to add to that manual, this is all pre-manual notes, all right? So remember I talked yesterday, we're going to take that manual and go through it. That will be uh, next week on Thursday, um, halfway through my lecture, we'll pick up right there, okay? So this is all pre that handbook or that manual. So what we're doing is, why have a bus ministry? Why have a bus ministry? So we're going to kind of talk through some things. I'm not going to give you a lot of scripture. Maybe I might kick it in. I've done a study on that, and I might kick that to you next week, uh, but I'd like to get right into this. So um, the first of all, when you say, why am I going to have a bus ministry? You need to establish a purpose. Establish a, pers- a purpose. So what do you think would be the main reason to have a bus ministry. What? That, all right, that's it. Just to fulfill the Great Commission, all right, to bring people to Christ. So any other reason, any other reason you're probably going to then get discouraged and all kinds of other things, okay? So winning people to Christ is basically the main purpose, Okay. To have any other reason, I think, well, that is, it's going to lessen your purpose. It's going to lessen all the other things that come, all the, some of the negatives. We're going to get into those. All right, so what are some wrong reasons then? What are some wrong purposes? All right, you feel sorry for kids. All right, well, is that why I should bring them to church? I'm just feeling, I'm, I'm driving through a community. And I see little kids running around like, oh, man, it just would be good for them to come to church. All right, that's not going to last long. All right, this is what I can tell you. In January and February, running a bus route, that's going to leave. Because I ain't, I ain't feeling like getting out of bed, and I don't want to warm up the bus. All right, there, needs to be, there needs to be a little more motivation than that. Um, all right, there's a, there's a church an hour away. And they have a bus ministry. Man, that's really neat. Why don't we have one? I don't think that's a good reason. 
Right? Just because somebody else is doing something doesn't mean you should do it. Well, well, well is there any biblical backing on that? <laughs> Come on, my theologians. <sighs> you guys just let me down all the time. Oh, look at somebody read the Bible. Yep, so that's, that would be one. Then just simply, um, does God have an individual will? Okay, so if not, it gets a little creepy because I'm supposed to marry my wife. Oh, wait a minute, you mean all of us are? All right, it's an individual will, right? That's a little creepy, all right? Or we're Mormon, okay? One of the, one of the two there. But there's an individual will. So there's an individual, there's an individual will, I think, also for a church in some instances. Not everything that this church is doing, I can do. Why? Well, some is because of the gifts that are in the church. Some is just, I'm a different person. Okay? So you need, just because somebody else is doing something, it doesn't mean I'm going to do it, all right, for the church. Um, all right, here's another, another reason. Let's say you're leading in the church and someone comes to you and they say, hey, you know what? I just think we have to have a bus ministry. That's okay, but as the leader of the church, feeling sorry, or someone else has one, so I got to do it, or someone in your church comes and says, hey, we should do this. We're, we're doing this. We're, one, if, if we believe God wants us to reach these children for Christ and God wants us to have a bus ministry, so it's kind of combining, I believe it's God's will, and I want to reach children this way. It's a combination of that, okay? So here, then, so we said the purpose of the bus ministry. What are some pros of having a bus ministry? And then we're going to go through the cons not con artist, you will have some of those probably on the bus ministry, but what about the pros of having a bus ministry? Uh, one, to reach unchurched children and families. And so by providing transportation, you're lessening their excuses. Doesn't that make sense? You're lessening some of their excuses by saying, well, I'll just come and pick you up. What about that? Okay, so you're reaching unchurched uh, children and families. Second, um, you will boost your Sunday school and children's ministries and youth normally. And by boosting that, what, what do we mean by that? You're going to boost the numbers. You're going to boost the amount of people that you're going to reach. There are, in fact, I just read an article this week um, on counting numbers or not counting numbers. Okay, the thing is, I can't get away. I, I kind of have to count numbers. All right, so you know what? I, I'm tired of it, and I'm not going to count my offering anymore. Oh, I kind of have to. No, you know, everything's about money. Yeah, but does that mean I just throw all mine away? Well, if, you're gonna, if you come to that point, throw it my way, okay? <laughs> throw it my way. But it's just numbers can be... It can be overemphasized, but how do you know how many workers to have if you don't count? You're not going to know, All right? So I'm not going to I'm not going to count these people. Well, how many? How do you know how many workers you possibly could have someday? You, you know what I'm saying? You you have to have some basis. So counting is important. So having people come in is good for the church. Right? Otherwise, let's have nobody. <laughs> so um, you will boost your numbers in Sunday school, children's ministries, and youth. You also, here's the third one, you'll influence other family members through the bus ministry. What do we mean by that? Okay, um, in this past couple years, we've, had a, we've made a strong emphasis on, from the book that you're reading. One of the books that you're reading, some of you have already read it, it from Bus Crowd to Driving Crowd. 
All right? We started that about three years ago with our uh, bus folks and just saying, hey, this is the purpose. This is the purpose. It's hard, but what is the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is to reach the family. All right, I have, in the past year, I have a number of members that have joined, and guess where they start, guess what the initial start was? Reaching the, the kids, okay? That's what, that's the ultimate goal. You will be able to reach families if you have a focus to reach families. You will be able to do it, okay? So uh, the goal is to have whole families saved through the means of transporting them to church. Um, so that was three. Number four, homes can be transformed through reaching them through the bus ministry. Homes can be transformed. It may start just with the children, but you can transform the home. Uh, then the, uh, what are we on, five? Uh, riders can grow up to become workers and leaders in the church. I have a number of them. Okay, uh, Eric Ramos, Mr. Ramos. His family was reached through the bus ministry. Right now, he's a staff evangelist. All right, and he teaches. He runs a lot of things with the college. It wouldn't have happened. Wouldn't have happened. Um, there's a, another family. He's actually an assistant pastor up in Michigan. All right, he was reached uh, through our church, and his fam um, family started coming. And so now he's an assistant pastor. He runs a school. Um, um, Mr. Todd Wright, all right, Mr. Tony Wright, all right. There's a number of folks in our in our in our church that are reached. Um, you could talk to Fred Edwards. Fred Edwards, uh, let his kids start coming. Okay, let his kids start coming. And it wasn't with ours. It was another bus ministry, I think, in Michigan. Let his kids start coming. Uh, then his family gets saved. And now his son runs a bus route. So riders can become workers and leaders. All right, it's a... Is it, a, is it a long process? Yes. Uh, it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, so that's some of the pros. What are some of the cons of having a bus ministry? All right, so what's the first one? All right, just right away. What do you think? Oh, right there. Money. All right, it's a lot of money. Okay, as a church, we spend at least... 300,000 a year, at least. You'd say, <laughs> all right, so can you put a price tag, all right, this past, uh, this summer, actually, okay? Um, we had, we had a young lady that grew up all through our bus ministry, and then a young man that was reached through her through the, you know, because of the bus ministry, I believe, and they got married. So can I put a price tag on it? I can't. I can't put a price tag on it. All right, so that's, it is a lot of funds. All right, but, but really, most people, our, ours is an unusual situation because it's kind of established. So um, then start with one. Normally, when I'm recommended, if somebody comes and sometimes people sit down and say, all right, so I'm, I'm thinking of starting a bus ministry. How do I do it? I usually always recommend two routes. Start with two, not one. And the reason is that more than likely one's going to flop. You just, you don't know the dynamics of where kids are and what area. You may drive through an area. I, I sometimes like, oh, yeah, man, there would be kids here. Nobody. Nobody wants to come. And that's discouraging when you're starting up a ministry. So that's why normally I recommend starting two areas. That way if one flops, then the church like, because you're going to have negative people in the church that say, we shouldn't be doing this. That's a whole lot of money. We should be using that for this. this. But part of it is it costs money to reach folks. It just does. I mean, you can't, there's not, nothing is free in life. It costs money. So you're going to have to maintain the buses. You're, well, you're going to have to buy the buses. You're going to have to maintain the buses. But this is what I found most places, most of the guys I know, they have 
you know, two or three buses. And then they, they have a guy, usually it's a man in the church that's pretty gifted mechanically, and their buses run pretty good because the guys volunteer. I mean, they, you only have two or three buses. They're, they're humming pretty good. Now, does it take some money? Yes, it takes some money, but uh, there is a cost, and that's going to be expensive. Okay. Uh, second, the, the, next, the next thing that is the con, okay, you got the cost. What's, what do you think the uh, next one is? It's the, one of the hardest things. Time close. You're very close. So what, who is the time for? Yes, but um, you're close. Workers. All right, it's workers. All right, most of you, uh, you know, well over half of you, you're not from here, so you know that. So, you're like, so somebody, please, please. Um, it's drivers. All right, so what does drivers mean? CDL. All right, we do even training here. All right, even myself. Um, I was just looking at my license because this February mine's due again in, in Indiana. You have to, every two years, you have to get a, a, a physical exam. That has to be, you have to carry that with your, with your license. Um, it, it costs a lot. Like I've got a couple of guys that are trying to do it. And more than likely, it's going to cost them 200, 250 bucks to get a CDL. Now, what we have done is... Um, I will pay a hundred to one hundred twenty-five dollars towards it, but it's a reimburse. And the reason I say that, I won't pay for failure, right? Because a lot of guys will flunk the uh, test, like over and over. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pay for flunking. But once they get it, I'll reimburse them X amount of dollars. Why? Well, because a CDL driver is gold. I mean, it, I mean, it's just, it's, it's worth everything because. All right, yeah, I got, a, I got a bus captain, but I don't have, we can push it. That ain't going to work. Okay, so that is some of the cons that people will say is, oh, man, I don't, I, all right, there's the cost, but then I've got to have workers and in your area, like out in California. If, if, if I, was, I was talking with a pastor recently out in California, if I was in California, I don't think I'd have a bus ministry. He's, oh. All right, and I think it's, it might be New York. There's a couple of states. I mean, it's like living in communist uh, Russia, all right? You might as well. They're basically the people, um, the people, I think they ship them over, the government people from there or whatever, or they were uh, resurrected from the uh, Russia in the 40s and 50s, all right? And um, cryogenics or something and put them in there. But it's just, what's crazy is some of these states, they make it so hard that it's almost impossible. So, I mean, there's these inspections and all this type of stuff that just makes it to where you're like, forget it, man. This is impossible to do. But there may be some other ways. You may be able to do uh, vans. Then do vans. Okay? I think providing transportation is important. Because part of it is the society we live in. What is America becoming? What, what is half of America besides liberal and crazy? All right? Those are, those are two very good answers you could have given me, but I wasn't looking for those. So half of America basically is what? Huh? Convenience, and they want a handout. Okay? You know, I mean, I, I've, got a, I've got to walk four steps. Yeah. Okay? So what I'm going to try to do is help them, and then once we get them saved, then we can help them salvation changes a life, right? And there's a, there's a whole world, that's the Wick, Rick Warren a philosophy. You can read articles on them. If you want to do that sometime, you can do a study. But Rick Warren actually has led the march of social gospel in America, right? He actually, I, I just read an article. He was down in a conference in Florida this summer, and he was speaking about it and basically land-blasting fundamentalists saying that we're all dead. Well, how do you know that? What, what does dead mean? 
What does the, no, we've got churches, and actually there's, there's a lot of Baptist churches in America, lots of them. But Baptists are independent. So you wouldn't know Rick Warren. Why? Well, because we're not all blowing our trumpets either, saying how many we had. And we're not, we believe the gospel is first, then the gospel affects a life, and then that transforms them socially. They start socially, and then somewhere they may get saved, but most of them don't, I don't believe. So that is a little bit of a difference in our, in our philosophy is, I'm going to provide transportation. Why? Because I believe the gospel can change a life and change them socially eventually too. Right? But the gospel needs to get to them. So what are some of the cons? The cost? Workers. That's just really hard sometimes. Uh, then what's the third thing? It goes along with workers. Then you have to train and you have to maintain. And so what does all of that seem to indicate? It's a lot of effort, isn't it? A lot of energy. And some people don't want to do that. Uh, then the, uh, a lot of the other cons are similar to this. Um, then it all a lot of the other cons, it's cost, it's workers, then it's maintenance, then um, and that training. So then if you aren't having that, then guess what you're going to have all through the church service and in your junior churches and Sunday school? What are you going to have? You're going to have chaos, distractions. All right, and then you're like, and then you get people that are really upset. Why? Because you got these kids that are irritating everybody, and they're misbehaving. So lack of guidelines then will make other people, it's going to make the naysayers, what are they going to have? They're going to have something to grab a hold on, and, that, and that's just going to build and build and build. So that's why we're starting with pros and cons, the purpose, and then we're going to lead into some more organization of it. So what are some foundations? All right, so we said the purpose, we have the pros, we have the cons. What are some foundational things that need to be in place if we're going to have a bus ministry? I put it down into three things. Okay, three things. You have to have purpose, you have to have prayer, and you have to have planning. All right, those three things are foundational to a bus ministry, and all three come together. So we have a purpose then. We're going to uh, I would almost say that for a bus ministry, have a purpose statement. Some people um, don't like purpose statements. I like them. Why? Because it keeps people focused on why do we have this. And then when other things come, you're trying to add something to your bus ministry. You come back to that purpose statement and does it align up with that? Okay. But prayer, um, I don't think you should run into it without praying for a while. And always that should be true. I know, um, in fact, in one of our lectures, I'm having Dean Leslie come in, and he's going to do a lecture on addictions programs, all right, in, in this fall. The reason I'm having him do that is because in this day and age, you're going to deal with what he's dealing with. All right, and uh, I've had him working with it now six or seven years. There's tons of training that we've done, tons of books, and in fact, this summer I sent them more to training, and we're actually switching our addictions program to RU. And we're doing that uh, because we prayed about it for almost two years. It's not something we do fast. We just are thinking about it, we've had it, we've had a program, we used to have RU, we went away from it, um, then we said let's pray about it, let's think about it, and do it slow. And that's what you should be doing. All right, if you're going to lead something in the church, yes, there's a purpose, but we pray about it. We pray about it. Does God have a direction for us? He'll have a direction and he'll help guide you and he'll help guide you and guide you and guide you. And even during that process, there may be ideas out here that you're even looking at. We did. We looked at lots of different ideas. And then it was like, nope, can't do that. Nope, can't do that. Nope, can't do that. And then it just settles in. You'll see God do that for you. 
So you're, um, you have prayer, you have purpose, and you have planning. Okay. All right, so here is, we already talked about this some. Uh, let me give you, as we close out here, let me give you 10, 10 steps that will kind of lay out or if you're going to start a bus or a van ministry. Let me give you 10 things. And then next week, I think actually we're, we're ahead of schedule. We may be able to then uh, go into a lot more of the planning aspect. So here are 10 things if you're going to start it up. Number one, um, develop a purpose statement. Develop a purpose statement. And by that, decide what you're going to do and when you're going to do the bus ministry. I know bus ministries. In fact, I was uh, talking with um, some, well, uh, Pastor McGovern, uh, he's run his on Fridays, and uh, one of the students was saying they're, they're praying about moving it okay, to Sundays. Um, but even that, it sounds like he's doing the same thing. It's praying, talking, praying, talking. Why? Because there's a lot of logistics there, okay? So you learn, uh, learn or decide when to do yours. I know guys that do it on Wednesday night. Like they have a Wednesday night service, so their bus ministry is Wednesday night, okay? I know uh, Pastor Lewis and I have talked about this. Just because something works here doesn't mean it's going to work everywhere, okay? So um, think about this around here. He has a walking bus route. <laughs> Ain't going to work here. You say, well, how is he doing that? Well, if you think you're in Chicago, so he has a guy that meets at a certain time, and then he just walks, and he collects kids, all right, and then they just keep walking. Why? Because within two blocks, you've got hundreds of homes, hundreds. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. He ain't working here. Okay, so it's a walk. So you go around the neighborhood, collect people, and bring them in. I mean, that's fun. That's a neat idea, a walking bus route, but not for me, right? And we were joking just recently because uh, here we do a lot of Monday night work parties. He tried that once. He said it was the worst idea he ever had because he has people that live 30 miles away that come to his church. So... Guess what he does? Um, about five or six times a year, he does Sunday afternoon work parties. I was like, oh, that ain't going for me, man. Nuh uh. I mean, ah, I just don't like that idea. But he, he went from two people coming to work party to over 30. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that, one, that one's a pretty good idea. Why? Because. Just because something works in one place doesn't mean it's going to work somewhere else. So that's why you're praying about it. And, and you're deciding what type of ministry you're going to have. And if we're going to have the van or bus ministry, when is it going to be? Is it going to be Sunday morning? Is it going to be Sunday night? Is it going to be during the midweek? All right, let's, let's figure it out. All right, so that's number one. Step two, prepare the church. Prepare the church. My... Suggestion is one year before, at least, start prepping. One year before. So what does that mean? Think about that. What does that mean? What are you going to do then? What? Raise the funds. Who's going to be the workers? You start prepping. What else? Figure out your route or routes, and then preach on it. You got to be preaching on it. You got to preach on it, teach on it. Why? Because the the naysayers. Then, if the pastor is preaching on it and he has Bible, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> yeah, they may still say it, but you have Bible. And I'm not saying that the bus. If someone doesn't have the bus ministry, they're not biblical. No, but if God is leading the pastor and he believes. Biblically, that's true, and then the leaders are behind it. Then you also have 
obey them to have the rule over you. You have that, you know, God is leading the pastor to do this, then follow him. It's, yeah, yeah, it may not be true from the other church you came from, but this is what God wants this church to do. So prepare the ch church, so decide. You're deciding, you're preparing. Then number three, you guys already mentioned this, obtain the vehicles. You've got to obtain the vehicles. <laughs> you know, nothing like starting a route with no, no vehicle. Yeah, someday. Uh, even when Pastor Woven was here, we were talking about it. On the way here, um, he, drove, he drove in and he was looking at buses. And on the way back, he was going back home through Muncie, Indiana, because he got an email from somebody and they had a couple of buses and they were looking, uh, uh, they're looking to buy one bus. You always have to be looking. All right, and uh, figuring out uh, where am I, where am I going to get these vehicles from? Okay, so then number four, enlist and train workers. That's why I say it one year before. Why? Because you have to have training. You have to have training. Um, it's very important. Um, then number five. Number five, then um, have a plan for recruitment. Have a plan for recruitment. Does that make sense? As far as recruiting, you're going to, all right, if, if the route takes off, what are you going to need? More workers. And then if, it, if people get excited, then you start another one. What does that mean? More workers. So have a plan for recruitment. Then... Uh, number six, develop a Saturday schedule. Okay, either Saturday or whenever. All right, for us, it's Saturday. We visit on Saturday. So you have to kind of come up with a schedule. People have to know what's expected. You can't start it without people knowing what's expected. Okay, so come up with a, a Saturday schedule. And you need to kind of be rigid on that. The reason our bus ministry is successful is because, well, you see the manual. We, we've put a lot of time and effort into it. It's organized. Um, we don't, uh, we really don't, you know, we're coming into four weeks. Uh, that's a little heavier, but um, I call it organized chaos. All right? But it's a little heavier, but um, we train all the time. We're always training. We're always training. We're working on it. Even in our, we start in seventh grade now. I, that started when I was youth pastor, so we've been doing that at least seven to eight years now. All right, so it might even be 10 years. All right, we start in seventh grade, and seventh grade, we have a training program. Eighth grade, we have a training program. They come into ninth grade. Then now, actually, under Pastor Parrish, uh, they have the ministry apprentice program that they can do ninth grade, a 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. Okay, so what do we start? We have six years of training. Six years. Then we also are in college and a training. Okay? Uh, but then we also work at that with our, with our church members. That's, that's why we have training. Like last year, we had a teacher's ministry workshop. All right? This uh, January, we're actually having uh, Ab Thomas come in. All right? So he will be coming in, and he's going to be doing training all right, and teaching. All right? Why do we, why do, we do that? Well, because... It's very important, okay? So develop a Saturday schedule. Then number seven, develop a Sunday schedule. It all has to be laid out, okay? So um, where, where are the routes going to be? Somebody has to organize it. Somebody has to organize it. And believe it or not, in your church, if God has led you to start that bus ministry, God has somebody in your church that has an organized mind and put them to work at it, all right? Help organize it. Then, number eight, establish the routes. Okay, establish the routes. Then number nine, have a kickoff Sunday. All right, have a kickoff Sunday where you start it, and that could be even when you're establishing a new route. You know, it's a kickoff. It, there's excitement in that, right? So you have a, a kickoff day. And then, so number 10, then you launch the ministry. 
So here's a couple of things as we close. Here's some things to uh, watch out for. Number one, don't have unrealistic expectations. All right, so you're starting to preach on it. Thousands have been saved through the bus ministry. Okay, so then guess what's going to happen? When you have two people that first Sunday, hmm, where are the thousands? And, and don't just make up things. All right. <laughs> I was looking up something recently, and this guy, it's just, it's, it's astronomical what people put out there on the website. I know you can't believe everything that's on the internet, but this is actually this guy's website, so he wrote it himself. All right? So he's claiming that on one of his campaigns, uh, you know, that he, he saw... 32,000, like 220 people saved. I'm like, I told my wife, I said, now one, I know someone told him to not put like 32,000. It has to be like 32,220 or 220. I'm like, that's so ridiculous. I mean, it's just, I mean, astronomical. I mean, and it was in a period of like eight weeks. I mean, what are you, Superman? All right, can you split yourself? All right, even if you have, you know, you were in a team. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So, so be careful of putting these unrealistic things out there because it is going to be hard sometimes. All right, those of you that have been in the bus ministry, I've, I've been involved with bus ministries for close to 30 years now. Okay, man, there's days, it's just, it's just flat out hard. I was just talking with, uh, I was meeting with some of our captains, working through them this week on different things. And I know this because I've been there on Saturdays. Um, and once they found out I was a pastor here, it just brought it to another level. So I would schedule certain visits so that they wouldn't be home. Because I knew, oh, yeah, they always go shopping there. I can come up, slip the things in the door. Because once they found out I was a pastor, I'd come up and like, hey, I was wondering, could you help us with... And then an hour later, I mean, it was like intense counseling. I mean, it was, I was like, oh, my word. So I'd come back, and my head was just pounding because it was four or five hours of intense counseling. And people, what did I tell you? It's going to wear you out. And it's not, and, and half of them aren't saved. So I'm trying to always steer, well, what about, you know, if we could, if we could just think about Christ, well, they don't want to hear that solution. And then some of the nutty things that are going on, I mean, I, I have a hard time keeping track of all of their mates. I'm like, so which one is that? Oh, uh, so what number was that? Oh, so, oh, that's your kid too? <laughs> I mean, it's just, it hurts my brain just doing, I have to have like an algebraic uh, equation just to figure out their family relations. And so, don't have unrealistic expectations. Secondly, don't just think that flyers will get them to come to church. <laughs> oh, we're just going to blanket this area, and we're going we're gonna to put a slip in every door, and they're just going to call us. No, they're not. That's not going to just... You know what? You know why people, a lot of people come to church? Relationship relationships. And that's slow and steady. Slow and steady. Now, bus ministry, every once in a while, yeah, you can maybe do a boost, but most of us sitting here have grown in the Lord, not because um, some flyer. We've grown in the Lord because someone took some extra time and built a relationship with us, and we've grown because of that. Okay? So be careful of having unrealistic expectations. Um, having, just putting flyers out and thinking everybody's going to come. And the other thing is van uh, or bus ministry visitation is different than other visitation, and you need to teach that. Does that make sense? There's, it's a different type of visitation, and you need to help people understand that. Okay.
All right, so one last set on this thing, and then next week we'll start into a lot of the organization. So we're all talking about um, why have a bus ministry and what are the pros and cons, the purpose. Here, you know, 10 things of, you know, 10 things to help us start. So that, let me close it with things that will kill your bus ministry. What will kill your bus ministry? All right, one, no enthusiasm. Okay, we're going to start a bus route. It's going to be really exciting. We need a couple of workers because I'm telling you, it's one of the best ministries there ever is. It's unreal. The results, the harvest out there, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are asleep because I'm talking, all right? So no enthusiasm. And I'm not saying you just whoop it up, but some people are made for bus. Bus ministry is majority is what? Children. All right, and you get somebody deadpan, you ain't going to have any children following them. And you want to look for people. I call, um, there are certain people that do have a gift with children. All right, they're like the Pied Pipers of kids. Okay, uh, my wife has that gift. I mean, kids just kind of gravitate to her. Okay, there are, there are other people, you do not want them in the children's ministry. Okay, um, because the kids, kids run. Okay. So no enthusiasm, number two, uh, a lack of vari uh, variation. In the bus ministry, it can be monotonous. So what do you, you need some varying every once in a while. So you, you want somebody that has a little bit of imagination. So no enthusiasm, a lack of variation. Number three, this, is, this will kill a bus ministry, a lack of control. A lack of control. Two more things, a lack of consistency, as in pickup and workers. And then number five, false promises. Now, you may say false promises. If you, if you say you're going to do something for some family, then do it. Or if you say that, hey, you come and I'm going to give this to you, you've got to do it. Right? It's just you're, you're, you're going you're gonna to burn people out doing it that way. But then consistency, um, there has to be, some people, some people think, well, you know, why, why isn't my bus ministry working? And then you talk to them, they, they never visit. Well, what do we say? People come because of relationship. So if you have turnover all the time in your workers, there's no relationships ever being built. People aren't going to come. People don't understand that. I, I've talked to pastors over and over. I, I know I've talked to Pastor McGovern, but I've talked to other pastors uh, that have been in a similar situation. People, people get bent out of shape. They're like, you know what? This guy took over as pastor, and, and people left. Now, you may, you may say, well, they should, be, they should be going to church because they love God. Oh, but they also love their pastor. Doesn't, doesn't the Bible say to follow me as I follow Christ? So they are actually following the pastor. So, you know what? There's people that have left here because they don't like me. Now, you have to get over that. You do, all right? Because it's, it's hurtful sometimes. You're like, because you're sitting at home and all of a sudden you realize they left because me. Oh, what's wrong with me? I'm actually a nice guy. I mean, they don't like me. All right, but, but that's, that's going to happen. So also in the bus ministry... You take over a route and somebody doesn't come. And like the, the, the old bus camp is like, why did they quit? Well, because they liked you and they don't, like, they don't have a relationship. So if you're turning over all the time, you're never going to have consistency in that route. And consistency comes when you require people to visit. Does that make sense? So if you're never having any visits done, you're like, why aren't people coming? Well, because you're not visiting. You have to have consistency and visitation, okay? And that, um, that ties into other things, but we're specifically talking about the bus ministry right now. So we're trying to help you in understanding these are all the things that we're just laying out as the start. The next Thursday and Friday, we're going to cover a lot of details um, kind of in planning and organizing, okay? And what you're seeing is there's a lot of work, right? But what you're going to see all this semester 
okay? Visitation, it's a ton of work. But you know what I know? I know churches that um, they, don't, they don't have people stay. They don't. They have visitors all the time, but nobody stays. But guess what I know about them? They have no organized visitation or follow-up. And they're all like, you know what? People just don't stay here. There's something wrong with our society. Well, how would they know you like them? And so we're even going to talk about that. And you know what you're going to find out with visitation? It's a lot of work. I mean, we spend a lot of time thinking it through. Why? Because when somebody gets here, I want them to know that I'd like them to come here again. So that's why I get their email. Usually by Monday morning in their email box is a postcard from me saying, glad you were here. Hope you come back. Why? Because I want them to realize, hey, I, I'm glad they came. If I met them, we, we always send a letter. I write a personal note to them. Because if I met them and they said, I write a glad to talk to you, uh, hope you're able to come back. Now, guess what you'll find? People don't come back all the time. If I, if I can, I'll take them out to eat. I'll line up a time. There was a young couple. They were VU students. They're nice. I took them out to eat. I was glad, but actually I had a deacon go with, and he paid for it, which was really nice. Okay? So I didn't even have to pay for it. But guess what? They never came back. I always joke with the deacon. I'm like, what would you do, man? I'm like, what's up? I mean, if I was just there, he probably would have come back, you know. But, but guess what you're going to have? You're going to do all that, and somebody's not going to come back. So did we waste our time? No. We're doing our job. And same in the bus ministry. You're going to put all this time in, and some people are going to say, what about the results? So do you say that about missionaries? Oh, so are you saying that about Hudson Taylor? <laughs> no, actually, we revere him, don't we? Read his biography. So maybe I'm just Hudson Taylor. Just call me HUD. All right, that's what they call me. All right? No, oh, but, but guess what? Some of it is we're just doing our job. We're spreading the gospel. So in the bus ministry, remember that. It's going to take a lot of work. And so it goes back to, I'm always going to refer back to our first lesson. So what's my, in the bus ministry, what do I need to have? A servant's heart. 